All right, let's get started. So, hi everyone, welcome to my presentation about the new role of innovation. I'm happy to have you here. And I'd love to make the session a bit interactive. So from time to time, I ask you for your input and I look forward to your replies in the chat section. My name is Vera Krabliger. I'm a digital innovation and business consultant. I'm also co-founder of Women in Immersive Technologies Europe, which is a nonprofit um, empowering women in the virtual and augmented reality sector. And yeah, I do a lot of other things. Um, I'm also a serial entrepreneur, and I'm very excited to be talking to you today about the new role of innovation. And since we're limited in time, let's dive right into it. So, I don't know which big of an impact this crisis had or probably still has on your business, but for a lot of people, everything changed. Nevertheless, it has also produced some inspiring, innovative responses, which I will share with you a little bit later. We can learn a lot about organizations when we see how they react during a crisis. Are they overwhelmed? Do they give up because things just don't work how they used to anymore? Or are they coming up with new ideas? That brings me to my first interactive part of the session. What is the biggest issue for you during um, this COVID-19 pandemic. Let me know in the chat section. Hello to Germany. What was your uh, biggest COVID-19 challenge? Are you struggling to recruit new clients maybe? Oh wow, okay, five year, uh, uh, five month old and also need to work full time. Kudos to you. I don't know how you manage, but that's quite an achievement. Customers are closed. Dealing with uncertainty, I love that. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, yeah, uh, this is very similar to what I've heard from various clients and friends. I also spoke to them about their concerns and they told me, um, actually like Astrid said, that they're mostly dealing, um, that they're mostly struggling with this uncertainty, uncertainty about what's gonna happen next, about which new rules or regulations will be introduced, how long is this all going to last, etc. Naturally, most people don't like uncertainty because it's scary, it's uncomfortable, things get out of hand, and for businesses, uncertainty bears a lot of risks. The risk of project being cancelled, like you said, the risk of clients not being able to pay you, the risk of having to let go of staff and even worse. So we need to be able to understand uncertainty and we need to be willing to deal with it. And this again, uh, this is again where I would love to read your opinion um, in the chat. Uh, what do you think businesses can do to overcome critical situations like that? I just switch to the chat section again. What do you think businesses can do to to overcome critical situations like that? What would be a good solution in your opinion? When you have to deal with uncertainty, with you, when your clients change their behavior. Oh yeah, okay, of course. So what, um, how can companies deal with this critical situation, with this crisis when, you know, people, uh, when you can't sell because people, customers change the behavior, for example. Learn how to flip what they usually do in creative ways to still accomplish their goals, but in new ways. Well, I love that. It's fantastic. Hi, Paula. <laughs> Glad you joined. Innovate to go where the business might be. Open communication, involve employees and clients. Effective communication, transparency, pivot. Create more opportunities. Wow, fantastic. Great response. Yeah. That's, yeah, a very... Um, I mean, those are all very valid points and great advice too. Uh, a very effective way to turn challenges into opportunities is, like you said, innovation. Because um, you have to stay, take a step back and you need to start thinking differently. This might sound horrifying for um, a lot of people. 
And I agree, sitting in front of a blank page can be daunting. I've been there many times myself. So I want to share a few tips and tricks with you how you can start your innovation process. First of all, start with your user, customer, or client in mind. What are their pain points right now? How do they behave differently than before? What new investments have they made over the last couple of weeks or months? And don't be scared to ask them. User research is extremely important, and the easiest way really is to simply talk to people. My second advice is use a business model canvas to reevaluate your business model. Um, the business model canvas, if you don't know it, is a strategic planning tool that identifies the nine key elements that make up your business, from customer segments to cost structures. There are templates online, actually, which you can download for free. And in order to find out what needs to change, first fill in the business model canvas based on how things have worked for you in the past. Let's briefly go through it. I usually start with customer segments, which are all the people and companies for which you create value. And I like to distinguish between users and buyers because they are often not the same. For example, HR managers could be the buyers and junior employees could be the users. Value proposition means the products and services that provide value for your customer segments. For example, a software to train junior staff in a specific area. Channels describe how you interact with your customers and deliver the value. In that example, you could interact by email and deliver value through an online platform. Customer relationships can be short-term versus long-term, automated versus personal, and so on. Revenue streams, very important. That's all about how you make money. So for example, you may charge a monthly license fee for your software. Key resources show which assets you need in order to create, deliver, and capture value. For instance, developers and hardware. Key activities means what you need to do in order to perform well. In our case, develop software mainly. Key partners are external people and organizations you need to leverage your business, for example, suppliers. And last but not least, your cost structure, which should include all the money you need to fulfill all the other points. In the next step, take a look at each block and everything that changed or no longer works. Maybe your offline channels are not feasible anymore because your customer segments um, spend more time, uh, the customer segments are different because um, the behavior changed and they now spend more time at home. But any of those nine elements could easily be affected. And going through each one of them helps you identify what needs to change because often it's just one of those nine blocks you need to change and all of a sudden it works. Of course, every case is different and the next step will um, differ depending on your specific situation. I prepared the following example based on the exponential shift to digital as well as changing customer behavior we've seen during the crisis. Therefore, my next tip is imagine a digital version of your business. Are your existing customers ready for a digital version of your product or will you need new ones? Which value does a digital version of your service provide? Which digital channels are most suited to interact with your customers and deliver value digitally? How can you create a digital experience to communicate with your customers? How can you create new revenue streams? What key activities, resources, partners do you need to create, deliver, and capture the value of your new digital offerings? And how did your cost structure change? Maybe you need to invest more in certain software or hardware. Also think about the money you can save because you don't need to hire a physical venue, for example, and you don't have travel expenses. Not everything is bad. Okay, once you've come up with your digital solutions, the next step is testing your ideas. And I recommend you create something like a minimum viable product 
to test all the assumptions you made in your business model canvas. Are drones a reliable and safe way to deliver food and other supplies to elderly people? I don't know. And as you don't seem to fit into the target group either, we're not likely to find a representative answer to this question right now. So what do we do? We test it with elderly people. And once you've verified and validated your hypothesis, you can start executing your digital business model. Now let's have a look at some examples of how businesses manages, manage to digitalize as a response to the pandemic. In China, hospitals have worked with e-commerce giant JD.com and the robot startup Kudu Technology Transport medical supplies within hospitals as well as to bring food supplies um, and medicines to people confined to their homes using drones and robots. In the US, the situation is a bit more difficult due to regulations and safety concerns, of course. But companies including Amazon, Alphabet, Domino's, UPS and Walmart are already testing drones to deliver products like retail items, medicines and fast food by drone. At a hospital in Washington, a COVID-19 patient was successfully treated, treated using a robot. The doctor was sitting outside of the window and used the robot's camera, microphone and stethoscope to monitor the patient's vital signs and the robot's large screen helped the staff to communicate with the patient. LucidWeb, a white label distribution platform for 360 degree virtual reality and augmented reality content reinvented themselves as response to the considerable changes COVID-19 has caused. Before the outbreak, they were exclusively working with agencies, publishers and broadcasters. Now they offer additional services and solutions such as virtual showrooms, tours, virtual stores, dance and many more. And they opened up to entirely new customer segments, including museums, retailers and tourism companies. So yes, this pandemic has been a challenge for a lot of businesses. And yes, innovation is a way to turn those challenges into opportunities. Now, what about when there's no pandemic or other crisis going on? How important do you think innovation is for a company's success? And I just changed the chat section again. How important is innovation for a company's success? What do you think? Is it something that's required, very, really important? Yeah, Emma, I agree. Crucial. Very, uh-huh, collaboration, creativity to stay ahead. Yeah, I'm glad to see your positive response to this, to innovation. Um, how about we throw in some numbers? So, Mac, uh, according to McKinsey, four out of five executives think that their current business models are at risk of being disrupted in the near future. And even more, state that innovation is crucial to their growth strategy. Unfortunately, most companies run innovation the same way they do regular operations, which Frankly, it doesn't work that way. Innovation is not easy. There's quite a few success factors you have to consider. Due to time limitations, I cannot share all of them with you today. So let me tell you my top three factors for successful innovation. Most importantly is the right mentality. 60% of the top 10 innovators worldwide focus on engaging customers to help shape new products and services by making sure they understand the end users first. And those called um, need seekers often address unarticulated needs and then work to be first to market with the resulting new products and services. And that's very much in line with the lean startup and jobs to be done school of thought, if you've heard of that. The next success factor is aligned business and innovation strategies and the pro-innovation culture. In order to sync your innovation strategy with the overall business strategy, you have to understand your existing systems. For example, do you have a process for submitting, testing and evaluating ideas? Moreover, you need to decide which type of innovation you want. 
Do you want to optimize existing products for existing markets? Do you want to leverage them to reach new markets? Or do you want to disrupt the whole market and become the next Elon Musk? And I personally think we need more female role models. And I hope one of you is the next, or the female Elon Musk. So, but anyways, let's not change the topic. Um, yeah, and last but not least, you need to find the right partnership and technologies. While some large organizations have internal resources to lead through the entire innovation process, most companies collaborate with external innovation and technologies experts, like myself, to identify the right solutions. Another key success factor I want to share with you is measure and evaluate. Depending on your innovation type and goals, you need to select appropriate KPIs and keep track of them. Make sure to include both input and output metrics. Input metrics measure if you're doing enough of the right activities to reach your goals and whether you allocate your resources properly. Whereas output metrics, on the other hand, measure whether these activities and resources have had the desired impact on your innovation process. Before I finish this presentation, and you know this was a lot uh, of information, I'd love to read your number one takeaway from the session. So let me know in the chat, what was the main thing you learned in this session? Live in a very fast moving world, of course. Innovation is key. Love that, Oksana. That you're amazing. Thanks, Isabella. Success factors for innovation. Mm -hmm. Great. Anyone else? Be present. Wonderful. Thank you so much. It's great. Wait. Re evaluate your business one canvas. But people need to learn to change whether they like it or not. Yeah, totally true. The world will. Continue to move and enjoy your personality. Oh, thank you. Spreading. <laughs> That's great. Yay. Can I can I use that? <laughs> yeah, not everything is bad, right? <laughs> Innovation is awesome. <laughs> cool. Think positive. Yeah, I love that. Thank you so much. That's great. Um, fantastic. So the two messages I want to transmit today are we need to prepare for uncertain times and include the innovation process in our crisis management strategy. Also for scenarios that we cannot predict. And we need to innovate earlier and more often. Digitalization, for example, but you know that is nothing new. It's been going on for decades and there are still companies that think exclusively offline, ignoring the development of new technologies, as well as changing customer behavior. The world is changing so fast, we cannot allow ourselves to think about innovation only once a year or when a crisis hits. So, I hope this was helpful for you. If you're ready to kick off your innovation strategy and are looking for some more guidance, do drop me an email or reach out on LinkedIn today, because I'm offering a special discount exclusively for women in tech and female entrepreneurs. So thank you so much. Uh, enjoy the rest of the conference and take care.